Hey y'all, I'm Emily, an almost lifelong quilter with a lot of stories to tell. I have loved quilts and talking about them for as long as I can remember. And I'm here to celebrate the tradition of quilting with you. From family heirlooms to thrift store finds, every quilt holds a piece of history and a little piece of a quilter's heart. Join me every other week to get back to your quilting roots. We'll celebrate quilts and the real people who made them, learn a little bit about the history of quilting, and have lots of fun exploring ways to reclaim tradition in a modern world. I'm so glad you're joining me this week here at Patchwork Revival. Hi friends, welcome to this episode of Patchwork Revival Podcast. This week, we have my friend Megan Fowler of Modern Moon Quilt Studio here for an interview. I am so excited for you to hear our conversation. We dive into talking about her personal quilting history, her inspiration and her ideas behind her quilt pattern designs. We're going to learn about some of the reason she dove in to creating an experience open to all called Quilt Scouts. And we're going to talk a little bit about what Quilt Scouts is, why she came up with this idea and how you can be involved. We're also going to talk a little bit about our quilting legacy and how we can sort of be intentional about creating that for generations to come. Without further ado, I want to welcome you to my conversation with my friend, Megan. Hi, Megan. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining me here on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm so excited. (laughs) Me too. Okay, so to start off with, we are going to take some time to just kind of get to know you and your quilting story. Can you please tell us about your journey into sewing and then how you got into specifically quilting? Sure, yeah. I started sewing when I was a kid. I don't remember how old I would guess eight nine something like that um and I was actually just asking my mom about this recently because I was trying to remember and they had bought me a sewing machine and I told her I was like why why did you guys buy me a sewing machine she's like I don't know you just showed an interest in it so we got you a sewing machine it's like this this little Kenmore you know sewing machine and I would sew little projects like I think I tried to make some clothes Barbie clothes um, just little things like that. And I had that, I still have that sewing machine and I had that sewing machine up until about a year ago. It was where I started quilting. It was this little like dinosaur of a sewing machine, but I love it. You know, it's, I still, I guess I still have it. Um, so I had that forever and I always had it with me as I moved through school and college and everything else. And I would do random little projects. I'd get this crafting bug and want to make something or, um, my husband was in the military, so I would pull that out to sew ranks on his uniform and things like that. But I never really got into quilting until end of, it was like late 2019. Um, and I don't even remember what prompted it, but I went down this YouTube rabbit hole of watching quilting videos and like how to, um, <laughs> make quilts. And I just got sucked into it. And, uh, I just remember binge watching YouTube videos in the back of our cars. We were driving home from, uh, visiting family for the holidays and got home and I was like, I want to make a quilt. And my husband just kind of looked at me like, okay, sure. <laughs> Go for it. So I, uh, yeah, I, my very first quilt I made was this black and white, um, like Swiss cross, just kind of modern. I wanted it to be like this super modern black and white thing. And I just cut a bunch of like probably five inch squares, sewed them together in rows, ironed them. It was all, there was no rhyme or reason to what I was doing. I wasn't following a pattern. I think I just made it my own design and, um, yeah, pressing was all this way and that way and quilted it myself on my again my little sewing machine that I had and uh yeah yeah that was my very first quilt and then I it slowly got better from there <laughs> that's so fun is this um did you base your like apres ski pattern on it I did yeah so I wanted to basically as I got further into my quilting journey and started writing patterns and I wanted to create like a very easy beginner friendly quilt pattern and so I went back to this fresh quilt I was like okay if I was to do that quilt now knowing what I know now and doing it better and more efficiently how would I do that so that's what that quilt pattern is in based on <laughs> I love that it makes it so special it was already a great pattern yeah. but it makes it so like I like knowing the background of stories of all mm-hmm. that so yeah that's um, where your came from yep I love that so you are self-taught 
School of YouTube yeah, more kind of thing? Of the, yeah, the School of YouTube. Yeah, exactly. I started learning more when um, I finally discovered quilt patterns. I, I didn't know those existed when I made my first quilt. Um, and so that was a huge help, having those written instructions on how to do a half square triangle and, you know, a flying goose block and things like that. Um, and then I think I've done one or two quilts. I did like one or two quilt alongs. Um, and again, that was another huge help having that kind of guidance as you work through a quilt pattern, um, and just learn from there. Yeah. Did you find the quilt alongs on Instagram? Yeah, I really got into the, uh, Brittany's lo and behold, her patterns. They, they were like the first ones I found. So I think I did one or two of her quilt alongs. Um, the first ones I can recall. I love her patterns. So. I've never made them, but I look at them all the time. I'm like, oh my awesome. gosh. <laughs> then I'm yeah. like, what are you thinking? You don't even have time to like shower hardly, but whatever. <laughs> Start a podcast. That'll be great. That'll be great for finding time. <laughs> I, I know. Why do we do this to ourselves? <laughs> I don't know. It's fun though. I like it. So it really whatever. is. <laughs> um, so over the time, I like to ask people, how have you, so you started to quilt, you learned how to quilt. How did you decide you wanted to, and how did you go about just expanding your skills? Did you have a specific kind of like trajectory or plan, or did you just kind of figure out what you needed to figure out? How'd you do all of that? Hmm, that's a really good question. I, I think I just figured out what I needed to figure out in the moment when I was trying to, to make a, a quilt or follow a pattern. Um, a lot, I did a lot of learning ironically when I started writing quilt patterns. So my journey into where I am now in my quilting business is kind of a weird one. I'm in a former life. I was a chiropractor, <laughs> I sold my practice and then moving after that, you know, from that, I was like, okay, what am I, what am I going to do? So I decided I wanted to start a blog. I was like, I'll start blogging. That's something I can do from home what, with my little boy that I, you know, bought. Yeah, I have, I'm a stay at home mom. So I have him all day. And I was like, okay, what am I going to blog about? You know? So I was like, I really like quilting. I was like, I'm going to start a quilting blog. So I kind of started there and I started, um, documenting what I was doing, the projects I was making, creating some little tutorials that went along with that. And I came across this quote, pattern writing course. I was like, okay, well, that would be kind of cool to do. Maybe I'll learn how to write quilt patterns too. So just kind of started adding onto the quilting resume. I figured out how to write quilt patterns and I started writing more tutorials. And in writing those tutorials, I was having to learn skills myself because I still am a relatively, I would consider myself still a relatively new quilter. Um, so I was kind of learning things as I was going and writing creating content and learning how to write a quilt pattern. And um, so a lot of my learning came through that journey, I think. And I'm still, yeah, I Gosh, mean, there's still so much I don't know, but yeah, of course. But we all are, even people have been quilting forever. Like, if you're not learning, why are you doing it? You know, I mean, yeah, there's it's so fun to there. like sit. Yeah, it's fun to like sit and crank the same thing out all the time, but it's also like, ooh, I'm going to try this a little bit different this time. And what better way to try new things than in something that's pretty low risk, like fabric, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was um, laughing with someone because I was like, you know, I realize why I like to quilt because it's um, low stress and low key. But for me, it's also like literally I have control in my hands of this one thing. And I was like, I think that's why people like to build Lego or woodwork or whatever, because we feel like we're maybe in control about something when right literally nothing <laughs> is <laughs> under control I mean half but, the time I feel like I'm not in control of what I'm producing anyway when I'm trying to quilt something <laughs> I know right but it do, always but turns out to I be like to fun yeah always. and my favorite thing that you just said is that you were like I feel like I'm a pretty I'm still a pretty new quilter I'm like your first quilt pattern. Um, I remember I made it the palisade yeah. quilt, and it's like yeah. on point. Like all these things, I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> which is fine. It's fun. I just was like, this is like it blew my mind to feel to when I realized I was like Megan just kind of started quilting not that that long ago, and I was like, and she her first pattern was like an on point setting and. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I that think. was literally one of those things. I never made it. I was like, okay, well, this is, I came up with my design first. I'm like, well, this is how I want it to look. So how do I build that? Okay, well, I have to learn how to do an on point quilt. I, I've never done one before. So how do I, you know, go and Google it and look at the YouTube and figure out the math for the setting triangles. 
and it figured, just figured it out. And then I wrote a pattern trying to make it make sense for other people. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And it does. It's beautiful. I love your patterns. Thank They're, you. Thank um, you. Well, they're very fitting of your business name, Modern Moon Quilt Studio, because they are modern, but they're still a nod to tradition. Um, I love them. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely, um, I, I don't know how, I, I think I describe it as like modern nostalgic. Like, I, like you said, they're very much, they're very modern quilt patterns, but I feel like I draw most of my inspiration from old vintage retro stuff. So there's always that little bit of flavor of nostalgia to them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I think what makes you unique is that when I look at your designs, I really clearly see mid-century modern kind of like art deco. I don't know. I'm like, my vintage yeah. is like, you know, Little House on the Prairie. And that's just <laughs> kind of like, you know, a stereotypical quilting thing. But I think you have such a unique design perspective. And I love seeing that because I feel like it's so creative and so different and unique and i love that yeah thank you but i think you're totally right i think they're both very vintage in their own their own niche you know yours was very more, like you said more homespun like probably more texas prairie type i don't i don't know how you would describe it but <laughs> i mean i literally asked my grandma to quilt because i was obsessed with laura ingalls wilder and little house on the prairie <laughs> I feel like we all were our generation. <laughs> oh my gosh. We I all know. grew up with those books. I love it. I love it so much. So tell me about your um your quilting community. Whether we like it or not, we are part of a community, whether we acknowledge it or not. But I do think everybody's quilting community looks a little bit different. So how, what is yours like? Do you feel like for you quilting is a solo sport? Do you kind of reach out when you need to? What does your community look like? Uh, I would say it started off very solo. I didn't know any other quilters. I didn't have any quilters in my family. Well, actually, that's not true. My great-grandmother was a quilter, but I didn't know her. Uh, I think she passed when I was very, very young. But my mom and my grandmother weren't quilters. Um, so this was very new to me. I did it, I did it all on my own. Um, after I learn how to write quilt patterns. I was paired up with a group of wonderful ladies. Um, we now call ourselves the Ninth Patch Quilt Collective that you are very <laughs> aware of. You're a part of that. Um, and I would say that you, you other eight ladies have become my online quilt community, my, my very close group of friends that I confide in with questions and concerns about things. If I ever have a question about anything quilting related or in beyond, um, you guys are my, my, my support group. So, um, yes, you guys have definitely become my quilting community. And then on a larger scale, I would say just the Instagram quilt community. Um, it's just, I love them. I love them so much. I think that they're such a welcoming group of quilters online. Um, and everyone is so supportive and just lovely and, I just love it. I just love being a part of this community. I do too. And the sort of, I don't know what the word is, generational kind of connection you can find in, you know, going to even a local quilt shop, a quilt class or something like that. But a lot of times like I, I work um, and I can't go to like, you know, mid-afternoon um, guild classes in town or meetings or things like that. I do have a local quilt club I go to, but I would say my, um, just for my lifestyle and my kind of, I mean, I'm a millennial. I'm like, I'm, I'm cool with the internet. And that's where I find a lot of my community as well is actually yeah. online. But the nice thing about, you know, these apps and things are they have messaging features and you can interact with each other in a way that it feels really special because I'm like, I've never met y'all in real life, but I feel <laughs> like, like y'all are my ride or die quilt gals. Like 100%. So, yeah. 100%. And um, we always joke too about how our, how we talk about each other to our husbands and we all have like our own like <laughs> phrasing or like nicknames for each other <laughs> i know I was like so you know megan you know modern moon megan yes, exactly. like, yes i know you talk about 
I'm just like the girls. Like I was talking to the girls earlier, and my dad's gonna yeah, meet the girls. Who I'm talking about? <laughs> I know. Um, oh, but yeah, man. I was gonna say it's kind of funny because I've never had any type of in person. I'm trying to recall like in person quilting community that I can think of. Um, it's all been online, and I think the closest I've done. I've, I've come to doing anything in person or collaborative is the sweater weather sampler that we did felt so special because we all made our own blocks and then one person had to assemble them all into a complete full top and I got to I was so lucky to like be that person it felt so special I know. to get all these blocks from all over the country and put them together in one complete quilt so that was so fun um and then also we did a i've done a baby quilt for a friend and it was the same thing we all made a block and mailed them to one person had them assemble it um what else i feel like that's like the closest thing i've come to working on a quilt together with a group of women um and I, it was i love it i love it so much it's so special and we're about to do it again with the second sort of weather sampler so yeah but yeah, I I am... yeah, I'm pretty solo. yeah i'm super jazzed about sweater weather 24 I can't wait to do that. I love it. Um, I was just, this is going to be a teaser for your listeners, but yeah, I was just showing my husband the finished design that we were like mocking uh-huh. up, so I was trying to figure out my colors. And I was like, look at, look at these designs. Like you can tell, like every single one of us as a designer has leveled up in, in one year's time. You can tell that like our designs have become, I don't want to say more complicated or like more advanced or anything, but they're just... I'm so excited. I'm so excited to show off these blocks. <laughs> I know. Me too. I showed it to my husband and he was like, well, this look really cool. I was like, yeah, they do. I was <laughs> like, yeah. But I, I was like to give him credit. He was like, man, those look great. And yeah, you're right. You know, I'm like, maybe it's because I know, I know each of us, but I'm like, I would be able to just pick out whose that is. Like, yeah, I mean, I know because I went behind the scenes, but I'm like, I feel like we, I feel like we're falling into our own kind of styles and I don't know. I'm really excited isn't for it, it. And I think people it are going to so love cool. it. I know. It I really think so does. too. And you're absolutely right. I think we're all coming into our own with our design styles and it's so fun to see. A funny thing too about me like showing the so this happened last year and this year too. And I, every time I like show it to my husband, I'm like, look at, you know, all these designs. And he never, he never picks mine. He's always like, I like that one. That one's my favorite. I think last year it was Dana's, the Aspen Grove one. Mm-hmm. And I think this year his favorite is Ant's block. I won't say what oh, it is, but I think that was ooh. his favorite this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I ever actually asked Jordan what his favorite was. He would probably I didn't ask Jason. Like, he just, just tells me. <laughs> oh, he just told you. I was like, he would probably he just, just stare at me and like be like, uh, can I say? <laughs> Which one's yours, honey? <laughs> That's my favorite. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in the meantime, while we are waiting for Sweater Weather Sampler 2024, we have Quilt Scouts. Um Everyone, Megan, you know, Modern Moon Megan, is the mastermind behind Quilt Scouts, and I am so thankful that you are here to tell us all about it. So what do you want us to know about Quilt Scouts? Oh, Quilt Scouts. Um, Yes. So this has been a few months in the making. Um, Where am I going to start? So I came up with this idea. Oh, okay. So you're going to you're going to die when I tell you the story because you have a little boy that you read silly stories to. So this light bulb moment I had with Colt Scouts came one night when I was reading bedtime stories to my three-year-old little boy in bed. And one of the, we were going to the library all the time, right? So we checked out these library books and our favorite author is Bob Shea. If you haven't read heard Bob Shea, he has some fantastic kids books. They literally make us laugh out loud. Like they're just funny. But anyways, the one I was reading was called Who Wet My Pants? And it's about this little bear <laughs> who pees his pants. And I was trying to figure out who peed in his pants. But anyways, that's not the point. The point is, so in the story, the, you know, the characters are in this little troop, this little scout troop, and they're camping. And um, they all have their uniforms and their badges. And in the back, there's just this, like, really sweet page, page like, decorative page of, like, all these little merit badges and things like that. But anyways, I'm reading him the story. And I'm just like, oh, that's really cute. Like, I love those little badges. Like, wouldn't that be cool if we had, like, a quilt thing? Like, or you could get, like, quilts, like, merit badges. That would be fun. Bing. And then I think that Cha-ching. night, I was, like, on my on my messenger with you guys. Like, what do you guys think if I did this thing with, like... <laughs> 
<laughs> and of course you guys were all like super supportive and excited about it. So that's where the idea came from. And then it just grew from there. And I've been working on it constantly trying to build up, um, just this whole idea and this whole concept of, um, I would, it's like if boy scouts and girl scouts in a quilt guild had a baby, like that would be quilt scouts. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's, it's designed around, um, trying new, techniques, new quilting techniques, uh, new learning, new quilt skills. And then even beyond that quilting adjacent type skills, and then some really out of the box fun type of stuff. So I've kind of grouped it into like three different categories of these badges that you can earn from quilt scouts. Like I said, the first being quilting skills and techniques. So for example, we have, um, I pulled people ahead of time to kind of like, hey, what do you guys want to learn? Um, I had a lot of requests for mastering flying geese, learning curves, learning um, foundation, paper piecing, English paper piecing, applique, big stitch quilt binding. So all of those very directly related to quilting. And then there's some, like I said, quilting adjacent stuff. For example, quilt photography is the badge that we're featuring this month, the month of May. Um, learning how to take beautiful photos of your quilts and your fabrics and things like that. Um, hiking for quilt photos, um, quilt repair is another one. Um, and then some more kind of more fun out of the box stuff. Like I said, picnic on a quilt, stargazing on a quilt, hiking for quilt photos. Um, I'm drawing them blank on some of the other ones we have, but right now I have 18 different badges mocked up. Um, and ready to go for people to earn and order um, as they pack all these new challenges and learn new skills with their quilting journey. It's amazing. That was really rambling. <laughs> no, it was great because that's the thing. Quilt Scouts is really hard to just sum up in two or three sentences because it is, um, I mean, I guess if you really boil it down to like the nuts and the bolts, it's a membership. You can buy an annual subscription or a monthly subscription. But it's it's really a community, um, and I wouldn't even want to describe it as a membership because I feel like it's so unique and so different, um, and it's so it's so fun because it's literally designed to I think welcome people of all different skill levels of all different, oh my gosh, I'm a modern quilter. I'm a traditional quilter. I hand quilt. I machine quilt. Whatever, man, like come be a quilt scout. Like, um, and that's what, that's what I love about it because I've been quilting for a really long time. This idea that you have is it's not only how to quilt and things to quilt and what to try, but it's also how to use your quilts and how to be out in the world with your quilts and with other quilters, whether that's in person or online. And I think that is just so unique and so cool. It's a foundation for community. Absolutely. And that's, that's exactly what I wanted it to be. So like you said, it is in that it's membership based. Um, but like you said, it's definitely more than that. And it is strongly rooted in community, um, getting together with other scouts I wanted Quilt Scouts to have this adventurous component to it. And part of that was, okay, what what would being adventurous in quilting mean to me? And that was, like I said, trying new things. It kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier is continually learning. And we're always learning new things. And sometimes we can kind of lose our sojo or get stuck in a rut with some stuff. And it's nice to kind of get pushed out of that comfort zone a little bit and try something new. And there's a lot of these badges that I've um, designed that there's skills I don't even have yet, like applique quilting. I have never done an applique quilt. Um, So those are things that I'm going to be learning right alongside with these other scouts. As a community, we're going to draw the knowledge that we have of each other, bring in some experts on these things to create some really killer content to teach us these really fun and adventurous things. And like I said, adventures in quilting and then adventures outside of quilting, using our quilts that we make in a really fun and functional way, taking them out, getting them dirty, taking some photos out somewhere, you know, just, just having fun and being adventurous with it. And then also being adventurous in um, exploring our community, you know, getting out and checking out your local quilt museum or entering a quilt into a quilt show. I've never done that before. And I'm going to try to push myself this year to do that. Um, yeah. Quilt retreat, a quilt along, um, all these different fun badges that we have lined up to push out of your comfort zone, try some new things and get in with your community and meet some new people, meet some new scouts. 
um, part of the membership is getting um, access to a community forum. And within that forum, we have state groups. So you can kind of link up locally. Um, I have plans to meet up with some local Colorado cultures and we're going to go for some hikes and just do some fun stuff this summer. So community is definitely at its core. If your sewing machine is skipping a stitch or just needs a little TLC, we've got just the fix for you. Check out our friends at Creative Stitches, where any machine in the greater San Angelo area, regardless of make or model, it's the care it needs to keep running smoothly. They'll even offer convenient pickup and drop-off services. Give them a call at 325-895-8523. That's 325-895-8523. Keep your stitches neat and your creativity flowing with Creative Stitches. That's so great. And the other thing that I want to highlight that um, you probably won't really talk about is like just how much darn work you've put into this. This has been months in the making. And Megan has, you have 18 badges um, that you can earn. It's done on the honor system. So like, you know, whatever, you could just claim that you did or whatever. But each badge, there's like a handbook, right? So each badge has its own, um, criteria and Megan sat and like thought of all of these things. She documented it. She made it very easy to find and go through. I was a very high academic achiever. I love a good checklist and I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is like exactly (laughs) I'm so excited about it, but I also, (laughs) it really is. But I also feel as though it is very meaningful because it makes you kind of consider, oh my gosh, look, I've never even thought about this before. I never thought to try this. Like I had to eat crow the other day because someone was talking about English paper piecing something. And I was like, ugh. If I can help it, I'm never going to English paper piece anything. (laughs) And then I saw there's a dadgum EPP badge. And I'm like, well, I mean, I guess I'm going to have to because I got to get that badge. (laughs) Are you okay if I read some of the criteria for earning a badge? One of the specific ones. Yeah. If anyone wants to access it, that's all public info. So feel free to share any of that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's on www.quiltscouts.com. I'm sorry I'm doing this kind of on the fly, but... um, No, go for it. The the one that I thought, since it's somewhat relevant, is Megan has a badge for a quilting podcast. So um, (laughs) it encourages scouts to engage with a broader quilting community through the medium of podcasts. And so there are requirements, and there are like, what, five, six? So... This is what we need to do to earn our Quilt Scout badge, y'all. We need to research and compile a list of at least five quilting-related podcasts, noting their focus areas, notable hosts or recurring themes, okay? Listen to a minimum of 10 episodes to make sure at least three different quilting topics are covered. Um, Write brief summaries for each episode. Highlight the key points, new techniques learned, Reflect on how digital media can enhance your quilting knowledge and community engagement. Bonus, recommend at least one episode to other members of the troupe. This is not, this is so well thought out and it's so, I keep saying foundational, but it's just such a great like framework and a starting place. And I guarantee people are going to do some of these badges and then be like, oh man, I got to do more. And they're going to take it upon themselves to like dive in and then share all about that with people. Yes. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so excited. Um, I totally, I totally spaced on when I was listing off badges, the quilting podcast. I feel like we're running that one right now. This is the episode I'm going to recommend to people. (laughs) Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, look, I, I'm not, I'm not biased or anything, but I would say that the patchwork revival is a great place to start earning your quilting your badge. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) But there are so many great, um, podcasts out there. So it's really nice that we have all these options. 
Yes, yes, absolutely. But yeah, there's a whole uh, badge guide. So if anyone wants to cruise through that and read the criteria and um, I hope it doesn't sound like too intimidating or anything for people. It's not like homework. It's just like you said, I think it gives guidance to people I'm like, okay, what does it mean to have earned this badge? Like, what should I do? What, what thing should I be checking off the list? It's all on the honor system. So, you know, we don't have to show your homework or turn anything in. A lot of those prompts are, um, like you said, you know, writing down some things, journaling your thoughts. Um, it's just to kind of reflect on like, okay, what am I learning in this process? What did I take from this podcast episode? Um, what's something new I learned? Um, so things like that, just kind of absorbing it and taking it in and, but yeah, it's not like you have to yeah. submit anything. Or it's a anything great, it's a great life. starting point. And I yeah. think that some of what, because you've had you've had a great um, kind of showing for your launch. So it's been mind blowing. Yeah, it's yeah. been great, and it's, it's an awesome. open it's open year round, right? So anyone yes. can come sign up at any time. Yes, correct. Yep. So yeah. we have the two different options: so the monthly membership option or the yearly membership option. Um, right now we have a founding member rate, so it's going to be a lower rate for the people that are joining right now as founding members. Um, you guys are jumping in with a brand new membership and I wanted to reward, reward that with a really low rate that will get, um, you know, grandfathered in when those rates go up down the road. Um, so yeah. I feel like, so I've had some people, um, kind of reach out to me, quote scouts, what is it? Why are you doing it? Cause of course I'm like post about it or whatever. And I'm like, you know, it's funny because this is such a um, kind of basic idea for us who, you know, at least who were in the States and were like, yeah, I mean, I was a Girl Scout. Like you sell cookies, you get prizes, you have friends, whatever. Yeah. But um, I'm like, no, that's literally what it is. But I think once you really understand sort of the intent and the framework that it's built around, um, I think it's such a cool, cool idea that was like in front of us this whole time. And I'm glad that you like jumped on it and figured it out and saw it and like made it happen. Um, I really, yeah. I really love it. And I, what I told someone, someone was like, why should I join Quilt Scouts? Like, why did you do it? And I was like, well, I'll tell you why I did it. So within the last year and a half, maybe two years. I don't know. Time flies. But I really, I was like you, I was a lone wolf quilter. I got to where I would, um, I was just the only person I knew that did it. Like I was a middle schooler making quilts. I did not tell people about it. I did not like have friends who came and quilted with me. I just didn't have like the built-in community that some people have when they've yeah. learned at a class or something like that. And so I was just kind of did my own thing. And then I got so busy in school and residency and working and becoming a mom and all these things that I just would kind of go into my little hidey hole, process my life by like sewing. And then I kind of started sharing stuff on Instagram because I was like, wow, people share really cool stuff. I'll share some stuff and see, you know, it's kind of cool to like see your growth as you look back on things like that. Isn't it funny? And yeah. Yeah, it is. In the last couple of years, I was like, you know what? I'm here. I finally have my first like big girl job. My kids are like not really self-sufficient, but they're not tiny anymore. At least they're not like in my belly. And so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to like get out there and like try to make some friends. And I found a local quilt club and I was like terrified, but I was like, I'm going to go. We meet once a month. I mean... I have a friend who's kind of my age and then everybody else is quite a bit older. The nicest, sweetest, most encouraging people, y'all got to get out and meet your local people. Um, yeah. It doesn't matter about age. Like we all love quilts. We all love all kinds of quilts. But I still felt like I still wanted to engage in community in a way, you know, like, cause now that's become comfortable. So I'm like, what do I do next? Like, how do I how do I do all these things that I want to do and be part of things that I want to be a part of? And obviously the um, nine patch quilt collective and the sampler, that was such an awesome experience. And it let me like really put myself out there um, kind of like sharing an original design without feeling like totally alone and flailing because it takes some like guts to do. Um, yeah. But then I was like, man, Honestly, Quilt Scouts is now a way that I am going to just continue to challenge myself. And 
I mean, I hope that I can find some people locally who will do some of the things with me, whether they're quilt scouts or not. I'll be able to go share these ideas with people and be like, hey, guys, let's go to the state park and go take a hike and like, let's take some quilts. Um, so I'm I'm super excited about it. And that was what I told my friend. And then I also was like, and side note, each badge has a checklist to achieve. <laughs> and it's like, that's definitely a selling point for me. Cause I, I seriously am like, that's my thing. <laughs> and so she checklist. was like, I know it. she was like, oh my gosh, I love that. And so I really <laughs> hope she joined as well, but I'm like telling everyone, I'm like, y'all, this is going to be really fun. So <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm excited I, to see it so, grow. Me too. Me too. I really am. I think it's going to be it's already bigger than what I had anticipated. I, I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> but um, just the feedback I've already gotten from people is blowing my mind. I had this um, group of three women that joined together, two sisters and their mom. And they were all so excited and like getting to just join together. And they sent me a couple messages basically saying, we're doing this together. Um, and they were already like planning out what badges they're going to earn first and coming up with like scout puns and what they were going to call their little troop. And oh my gosh. And folks that are like, you know, I have totally just not enjoyed quilting. I don't have my sojo right now. And this is totally bringing my sojo back. People are getting so excited to just do these new things and try, try something new and, um, connect with community and, um, people reaching out internationally. I've had so many folks ask about if they can join, if they're not a U.S. resident. And so I've had people from Germany, uh, Hong Kong, Australia, the UK, Canada, like literally all over the world, people are wanting Amazing. to train. It's so exciting. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been bigger than I could have imagined. And I'm so grateful and so excited. And I just can't wait to see what this becomes because I think it's going to be this little light bulb that, you know, came from reading this goofy book to my kid at story time has like mm -hmm. come into this crazy big thing and it just blew my mind. Yeah, it like lit a wildfire, like the good mm -hmm. kind, the good kind of fire. Um, yeah. I think it's so fun. I do want to tell us about your, um, tell us about the badge of the month. This is the way I interpret it. It's like this month's featured badge. Is that an accurate way to describe it, you think? Yes, that's very accurate. So the way that, that I have this set up is we have this shop full of badges that anyone can buy. Not anyone. If you're a member, you can buy at any point in time. Um, if you feel like you have earned it, you checked those check marks on that checklist, um, you can purchase those at any time that you want to buy those badges. Um, every month, though, I'm basically shining a spotlight on a specific badge to just highlight the content um, for that badge. So we are writing and creating content designed around each badge and then highlighting that content in that badge every month. Does that make sense? Yep, for <laughs> so, sure. So like, for example, this month, uh, we started off with quilt photography. And the reason I wanted to lead with that one was because we've been talking about we're going on all these new fun quilting adventures, either inside our quilting room or outside. Um, we want to document those with beautiful, great pictures. So I wanted to cover that first so we can just capture these, all these awesome fun adventures that we're going on. So to, to help people achieve that merit badge, sorry, to achieve that badge, um, we created content, um, to support that. So going in, digging into quilt photography, specifically with a smartphone, how to do that, how to stage a photo, how to set it up, how to get good lighting, how to crap and edit and and do all of those things to get you know beautiful photos that you're excited to share on your instagram or your social media and share with your friends and family um so that's one example so next month we're going to highlight a different badge and there's going to be different content to go along with it but yes yeah, so that's how that's structured i love that and the whole idea of quilt photography actually ties into um an episode that i'm recording now um, it's going to be a solo show where I talk about documenting our quilts. And part of what I talk about is like, just take a picture of your quilt. And it doesn't have to be some big major production. And it, it really doesn't have to be some perfect fancy photo. But I mean, here we go. Like, here's a perfect resource to figure out like how to make that happen, you know? So it's, I love how this is becoming a 
almost just like another resource. Yeah. So the content that like the quilt photography content, like I said, it's, it's on the member site. So members can access it at any time. Um, we have these weekly emails that go out to, it gets delivered right to your inbox. So it's there ready, waiting for you to read and absorb whenever you have time. But on top of that, if anyone has any questions, we have the member site in the community forum where people are asking questions about quilt photography and like, Hey, what are you doing for this? How do you correct this? I tried this technique, but it's kind of turning out like this. So how do I fix that? And, you know, so I, sometimes, most of the time I'm there to answer questions, but a lot of times I'm not and other people jump in and we're helping each other out. And it's just, it's really, really cool. It's really fun to see. Yeah, it you is because troop, people you have a whole troop of people that you can lean on and learn from now when you, when you join. Yeah, you do. And people are, people are active. I mean, mm -hmm. in the, in the community and the kind of forum, the boards and mm -hmm. stuff that are there. So yeah. You've done a lot in your quilting life, Megan, but what is, I wanted to ask you because I'm really interested to know, what is your favorite like personal quilting adventure that you've taken or been on? Do you have one? I feel like I should have an answer for this right on the tip of my tongue, but I don't. Um, my favorite quilting adventure. I feel like the answer that's equivalent to saying like Jesus in Sunday school is quilt scouts. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you've been working so hard on it, but um, I, mean, I know that it's been an adventure. Quilt scouts has been an it's adventure. It's been a lot of hard work too. I mean, why am I struggling with an answer for this one? I'm going to start listing oh, things that oh, I know you've done. Okay. You have made a friendship quilt like meaning contributed to other quilts with other people like physically making the quilts mm. you uh -huh. taught yourself how to quilt you designed quilts with a sampler kind of vibe with other designers you took a pattern writing course you designed your own patterns you made quilt scouts you yeah I feel like I feel there's like so much just, I know there is like I'm just trying to <laughs> think back I'm like what are all the things that I've done um, I have to say, I feel like Colt Scouts has been the biggest adventure. I mean, I hate to like, you know, be super obvious about that one, but, um, yeah, I mean, this has been a, it's been, it's been bonkers. It's been a huge learning curve for me. Um, just trying to take this all on and create, I want it to be just top notch quality content. So yeah, it's been a huge adventure. I love it. And there's so much more to come to. I'm so excited about uh, I was actually just talking to my husband last night, I think it was, um, about just how funny it is to me that there's so much that I'm taking on that I've never done pers like personally, meaning um, I have never actually been part of a quilt membership, like an online membership or anything like that. But here I am, like I'm going to create one. <laughs> Um, I've actually never been to a quilt retreat, um, but here I am planning a quilt retreat for all of our scouts that we're going to do sometime in the next year. Um, just crazy stuff like that. I'm like, what, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? You're putting um, yourself out there. You're going know, on it's, adventure. It's amazing. I know, it really is. I'm just, I'm just totally jumping in, saying yes to it, just doing it, getting it done. But I do think it comes at a benefit because I'm able to create these things in a way that I think they sh they should be and not in a way that I've seen them done before, if that makes sense. Like I'm going to mm -hmm. make a quilt retreat in a way that I think a quilt retreat should be and how I would want it to be. Um, not in a way of like, well, I went to this quilt retreat and this is how they did it. So that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it fresh and give my perspective on it. And I, I think, I think it's nice that I'm not coming in with that bias. So. Yeah, I totally so. agree. Because it'll, it'll be, it'll be fresh. It'll be new. I always like think of you, Megan, as like the content queen because nothing you do is ever <laughs> halfway there. It's all the way or none of the way. Um, and so I know, I know it is top notch quality and the value is great. Um, but more importantly, it's just we're all in it together, including you. And that's so cool. I love that. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it means a lot. The, um, the final part of the kind of podcast interviews that I like to do is to, um, sort of imagine just, you know, when you really think about what are you doing, why are you doing this? What are you really creating? At the end of the day, I argue that what we're really creating is a legacy, meaning pieces of ourselves and our craft and our art that'll be passed on to generations. So um, it's always about more than just the quilts, you know, but 
have you, have you thought about that? Have you thought about your legacy? What do you feel like it's going to be? Do you feel intentional about it? I don't know. What are your thoughts? Mm, That's a really good question. I can't say I've really thought a lot about that. And I can't say I'm being intentional about it either. Um, I think that I figure things out as I go. And I think that like we were just talking about on, so no, I haven't really thought about what kind of legacy I'm going to leave. I hope it's a great, really awesome legacy that I'm going to be leaving, but I don't know. I'm sorry. That's a lame answer. It's really not because it's a big, um, it's a big topic that I think a lot of us don't think about or talk about. Like, I mean, no. my God, we're mid thirties. Like we're not about to just kill over like, God forbid, <laughs> I mean, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, obviously not, but, uh, <laughs> I think a lot about that because I'm like, you know, where I inherited my love of quilting was from my grandmother. And that's actually how I'll, the skill I have, I feel like comes from her and like YouTube, but my foundational skill is from her. And once I started doing things like getting involved with pattern design, and I kind of have a little, you know, a business, I would say, or a voice, um, your legacy becomes in some ways it can be through the podcast you're making or the content you're creating, meaning, yeah, you know, like, I'm trying by this podcast to like invite people into this amazing world of quilting. I'm trying to teach people kind of what I know about quilting as far as history and even a little bit of kind of ideas and techniques and things. But there's also that personal legacy that's like, no, I'm literally making like quilts that my kids are going to remember like, oh, I remember this. This was the cozy quilt that we, you know, like they help me make stuff. They see my fabric They're like, mm-hmm. mommy, are you making a quilt and all these things? And I'm like, that's just going to be who I am to them, even as they grow, because I'm always going to be quilting. Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, that's such a good perspective. Yeah. I mean, our kids, he, Lloyd is always, I think he's always going to know that mom makes quilts. He calls them blankets right now. I mean, we'll correct that when he gets older, but um, yeah, he knows mom <laughs> makes blankets and he loves to snuggle up in them and that's yeah, I mean, that's such a great point. And you're talking too about like just the legacy. So you learn how to quilt from your grandmother in most quilters. We are taught from either friends or family members within a quilt knit community. I think that holds true today. Like even, um, even with what I'm doing with quilt scouts, like I'm helping people learn how to do different quilting skills and how to do, try different techniques and things like that. So even though the medium is a little bit different now because we're doing things with YouTube and blog posts and, and Instagram, um, we're still learning one quilter is teaching another quilter how to do something. So even though it's not, you know, one-on-one hands-on in person, um, I think we're still passing those things out one, you know, from one quilter to the next. Um, like I said, even if it is um, a little bit more centered around technology now, I think the intent and the legacy is still the same, which is pretty cool. Yep. I agree. I love it. Well, I'm really glad that we got to know you a bit. We got to know your kind of style, your history, your legacy. And then we got to talk about Quilt Scouts, which is just one of my favorite things. I think it's obvious that I'm quite excited about it, but, um, the best place to go check out and learn more about Quilt Scouts, I would say is on the website, www.quiltscouts.com. Yep. You can also get on Instagram and go to the Quilt Scouts Instagram, which is at Quilt Scouts of America. Note that. Um, and then anybody who is a quilt scout, just reach out to them if you have questions or anything, because I think we're all really jazzed and really excited and would love to share. Yeah, I think people, I think they're excited to share. So everyone's showing up, they're signing number badges, their first badges that they're earning. So yeah, if you have any questions, reach out to another scout or email me. You can email me at hello at quiltscouts.com. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Um, yeah, check us out on Instagram, check out the website, the website's up and you can look at the badge guidebook and look at all the badges we have now. We have more badges coming. Um, we are continually getting more ideas from scouts. We have a whole badge submission form. So we're getting new ideas and there's new, pro- you know, products in the work. So it's not going to just stay at the 18 badges. It's going to grow. So, yeah. Yep. For sure. And there's going to be merch opportunities as well, folks. 
So I am going to make sure that I put all of the relevant links in the show notes so you can scroll down to the show description, check the show notes there. I am also going to put a link like directly to that um, badge handbook because I think that just gives such a great overview and idea of everything that you can expect with Quilt Scouts. And now is your chance to jump in as a founding member. I'm super excited. Megan, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. All right, guys. So that is it for this episode of Patchwork Revival. I loved having you here with me talking all things quilting. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and leave a rave review. Jump down to the show notes to find links for this episode, as well as a link to my shop where you can enjoy 15% off as a podcast listener with code REVIVAL. That's R-E-V-I-V-A-L. From family heirlooms to thrift store finds, the Patchwork Revival podcast is here to celebrate the generational connection made in the quilts we love. We'll see you next time.